infinite complacency, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Hello and welcome to another episode of Into the Fray. My name is Shannon Legro. If you're a new listener, welcome. You can find everything Into the Fray at IntoTheFrayRadio.com and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want even more ITF, head to Patreon.com and get instant access to 91 bonus episodes live video chat sessions, stickers, signed books, and more. There are four different pledge levels for you to choose from. So again, patreon.com and search Into the Fray. Speaking of Patreon, my new patrons are Kendra, Nina, Eric, Jenny, Alana, William, Todd, Nigel, Cheryl, Bobby, Grant, Alan, Sophia, Glenn, Nicola, Katie, Chuck, Stephen, Ernesto, Jeremy. From my Sasquatch Chronicles days, No Shoes Curly, Kay, Graham, Earl, Abby, Chad, Lawrence, Jean, T, Will, Tim, and Susan. Welcome aboard, guys. Or welcome to the dark side, I should say. I am also excited to announce that Into the Fray can be heard on Classic One in my homeland, the UK. It will air every Saturday at 11 a.m. in Norwich and Brighton and expanding soon to Surrey and London in July. You can visit ClassicOne.uk for more information. And last but not least, if you're looking for your next favorite podcast, I've got a fantastic recommendation for you. It is Jim Harold's Campfire. Jim is a full-time podcaster with over 2,000 episodes under his belt and counting. Recent episodes are titled When the Devil Called and Punched by a Ghost, which include first-hand stories from those who experience them like a house-sitting gig that turned sinister. UFO sightings, a red-eyed creature peeking in a window, a toddler with an eerie message, and more. Trust me, if you enjoy Into the Fray, the campfire will be right up your alley. Tune in to Jim Harold's Campfire on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to Into the Fray. So on this edition of Into the Fray, I have Kitsy Duncan and KJ McGlynn, and we are missing the third member, uh, Tiffany Rice, so I just want to give a shout out to her, but uh, on, we're just having Kitsy and KJ on this one, and they are part of not only Paranormal X Road, but the Kinda Nerdy Girls podcast, and I just want to say there are, of course, other members of that podcast as well, but you can, uh, you can probably grab that podcast anywhere that you might uh, also into the fray. Uh, welcome, ladies, first of all. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having us, Shannon. Yes, thank you so much, and thanks for the shout out to uh, the kind of nerdy girls podcast. Uh, we're we're at everywhere uh, that uh, Oddity Files is as well. Kitsy and I just we don't sleep; we just do shows. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys are vampires. I, I from everything that you guys are up to, it's astonishing. And yeah, you may be 
vampiric in some way, which is awesome. It'd be great not to have to sleep. I have the skin tone for it. <laughs> do you sparkle though, KJ? <laughs> I do need to sparkle. <laughs> I mean, you do, but you know what I'm saying about that sparkle. <laughs> I'm not sparkling right now, which is why I'm glad this is a podcast and not on video. So, thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm only sparkling because it's uh, you know hot out and I'm I'm shiny because I'm I'm running around and putting birds away and you know what we were talking about before we started officially. But um, yeah. No, so all right, so you ladies. You put on workshops, uh, you go out on, you, of course, you know, paranormal investigators. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Sorry, everybody. And uh, most importantly, you say that you are trying to bring peace to those experiencing paranormal events. And we'll dig into that more a little bit later. But, you know, I have to ask this question in case people are not familiar with you guys and this is a question for both of you and right off the bat I mean how did you each even get into the paranormal um I'll let KJ go first I know Shannon you both know my story but I'll let KJ go first and then I'll tell you mine well I this is this is all Kitsy's doing Uh, so I, I don't even know that, uh, I can call myself, a, an investigator because, um, I have, I've been living the life of talking with spirits, having, uh, spirits, uh, in, in my home growing up. It never really was a, a weird thing to me, but I didn't, I didn't seek it out. I just kind of, uh, you know, what, what is normal to you is just normal to you. And, and having spirits, uh, hanging around was normal to me. Um, but what got me into, uh, what we're doing now, which is paranormal crossroad and bringing peace to people experiencing the paranormal is, um, that, uh, you know, I've been a, a fan of, of Kitsy's show for a long time. We've been friends for a long time. Um, loved oddity files. I don't think I ever really told Kitsy how much I, I would just love to do that with her. Um, but I started having a light going on and off in my house and, uh, knew that Kitsy would be able to come here and help me solve the mystery of who was visiting. And, uh, she did. And then she, uh, asked me a few weeks later if I would like to go do that for other people. And I honestly couldn't think of a uh, more wonderful person to be on this journey with. And I am learning so much from her as I uh, am oh, entering it. the paranormal investigating world. Uh, she's my hero and I get to work with her now. I'm blushing. It's a podcast, but I'm blushing. Um, <laughs> i got into this late. And if, you know, any of you are listening, haven't picked up my book from Beyond the Fray Publishing. It's called I'd Rather Talk to Dead People. And I go into great detail on how I got into my paranormal journey. But I, I grew up terrified of this. I really did. The movie Poltergeist scarred me pretty bad. Um, and, you know, when the the rage of all the TV shows, those came out people were like you know you should watch the show and I'm like no that's terrifying I, there's no way I know how and then I lost my dad and uh, we had moved away from you know where I grew up and where the family was and in this house I, I felt what I thought would, was his presence and it wasn't nearly as scary as I thought it was going to be but I, I wanted to know I wasn't crazy so I started watching said shows I started off with the the Kling brothers with ghost lab. And I realized, you know, if you get scared, all you have to do is yell at the ghosts and um, you're (laughs) fine. So um, that's not the case, by the way, little disclaimer there. Um, But yeah, so I became obsessed with all the shows. And then I met some people that had their own paranormal uh, team. And I, they asked if I wanted to go along and, I'm like, babe, I need one of those cameras where you can film in the dark. And we went and I filmed the whole thing. And while I wasn't a big fan of the crew I was with, because the one guy was standing at the bottom of the stairs, the the ghost that was known to haunt there, her name was uh, Rachel. And he's yelling up the stairs, come at me, bro, in the (laughs) douchiest way possible. I'm like, you know what? I don't think these people are for me. So I just kind of went out on my own. And then Oddity Files happened, and honestly, 
Paranormal Crossroads came about because some really cool people asked me to write a book. And as I was writing this book, I'd rather talk to dead people available on Amazon Prime and Barnes and Noble online. Um, I realized that I'm doing something really cool that a lot of people aren't out there. And I'm getting these spirits to communicate with me and trust me enough to tell their stories. So when the Oddity Files crew split up, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I wasn't done. And then uh, KJ and another friend of mine contacted me about coming out. And I'm like, well, I can do this on my own. And I couldn't. So that's why I begged <laughs> KJ to join the crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't do it without you either, Kitsy. <laughs> And then we brought her husband along as our sound and video guy. <laughs> yes, yes, that poor guy. <laughs> does he enjoy that work? What does he think of this? It, you know what, Shannon? He does. Uh, I it, I didn't know when when I asked Kitsy to to come to the house. I mean, my husband has always um, been accepting of my weird little life and like, oh, hey, tonight I'm talking to Cindy, my pet communicator friend, do you have any questions for our cats? And he's like, no, but let me know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, when I said she's, she's coming over, I don't, I, you know, I don't want this to be uncomfortable. You don't have to be in the room with us if you don't want. Um, and he, he was very open to it. And I, I think the, the experience that we had of really just this, um, conversation with some of our, our family members that was a conversation as if they were here, right? It wasn't scary. It wasn't weird. It was, it was pretty eye-opening for him that we could sit at our dining room table and hear my dad's voice. And, and we even heard his uncle came through for a little bit. And so I think that really, um, kind of, uh, changed things for him a little bit. So when I said, uh, you know, he's always come along with me um, through my media career. I've spent you know, my life on the radio and doing TV and you always need a producer. So it's like, hey, honey, hold a camera. Hey, honey, can you run the audio equipment? Can you be the DJ for this? So he was never, uh, you know, he, he's used to doing those kind of things with me uh, when I asked him to to come along and help me and Kitsy on the paranormal investigations. I think, you know, the experience that he'd had working in media with me and then the experience that he had being with Kitsy as she, you know, did her amazing thing and helped the spirits talk at our house just made him comfortable. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that there haven't been a few times where he's like, what did you get me into? But he's along <laughs> for the ride. <laughs> yeah, it's too late now. Once you, once you yeah. get bit by yeah. it, it, even though things can come up and terrify you and you go, why the hell am I doing this? You're still going to do it. For the most well, part. And what was really amazing, Shannon, is I think that, you know, he kind of didn't realize it, but he he has a knack for this. He will hear things um, through the odd box a lot of times, pick up things that um, the spirits are saying before Kitsy and I will. Um, and so it's nice to have him along sometimes because he'll help fill in the pieces as well with, you know, what we're trying to learn from the spirits. And explain to everyone what the odd box is. Yes, so the odd the odd box is, it's actually just an amplifier that um, I purchased online and it's got crystals on it. It's got some petals on it. So it adds creepy reverb, which always makes great TV. Um, you can take the white noise of the spirit box, you know, that ch -ch 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 you hear on all the TV shows. You can actually take that out so you can only hear the voices. And it's got another option where you can reverse any words that are coming over. So you know for sure, legitimately, that it's not radio um, voices coming over. But um, it's it's my go-to, the spirit box. And then I have this app that I adore called the Portal Plus app. It's a little extra, but sometimes <laughs> spirits um, have an easier time through the app than they do through the spirit box. Um, I'm, I hate every other app out there. I think it's all <laughs> BS. Um, but this one, for me, works. So, <laughs> Have you guys heard anything as far as once you hit it in reverse? Uh, you know, a la like Mr. Ed, that whole sing the song of Satan. You know, do you guys yeah. get any anything like that once you reverse it? 
Um, I very rarely put it on reverse. And here's why. For some reason, I know it's legit um, spirit voices because we get the same voice. It's not like a female voice is answering here and then, you know, a sing-songy voice is answering here. It's the exact same voice coming over on the spirit box answering all of our questions. So, I, you know, when I'm at a location where it's not working or if I can only get like AM stations, that's when I'll put it in reverse. But I, it, KJ can attest for this as well. I mean, it was when we were doing it at her house, she heard her father's voice come yeah. over on the spirit box. It, she yeah. was like, that's my dad. It was really amazing. Uh, just last weekend, my in-laws were uh, visiting and they asked to watch the episode with us. And that very first time that my my, you know, and I was, I was just sitting back, letting them have the experience. Uh, but that very first time that my dad came through, both of that, like they were startled. And my mother-in-law said, "That is your dad's voice." I'm like, "I know." <laughs> Isn't that you weird? didn't tell me that? Holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I did not give them any context of what you know. I just was like, "You need to watch this," and. She was blown away. Like, that is your dad. That is his voice. I'm like, I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, Shannon, you know, we've had that a couple times on investigations where it's like it's very uh, it's very clear to us. And sometimes we'll just let that we kind of let the we let the spirits warm up with the box. Right. So that we can kind of be hearing what voices are coming through regularly starting to pick up on like, oh, that's definitely a voice. That's a, you know, that is something we haven't heard before. And then trying to tune into that because you can really tell. And I don't, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm fairly new to this, but in working with, with Kitsy, I've learned, like you can start to tell when that is truly someone consistently coming through with the same voice. It must have been so powerful to hear your your father's voice. And for you, like you said, you haven't been in this for a very long time. But and I'm sure that Kitsy would say the same thing. When something like that happens, it's like a recharge of your batteries and you're just ready to go for like another 10 years. And you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. I love this work. This is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was part of the reason when she called me and, you know, and said she was she was going back to a home where she'd been to because they needed to get some more answers. There was a little more work to be done. And would I, you know, want to come along? I mean, there was no question. I mean, to be able to be in a room and help, uh, you know, help somebody else have that moment that I had where you connect with someone that you love and you hear them, um, that it, it, I, I want to give that gift to as many people as I can, as long as we can do it. KJ, who was the culprit of the lights turning on? <laughs> that was my, it was my grandmother. Uh, and she was coming. I was actually, you know, it was during quarantine. So everybody was doing things to, uh, uh, you know, keep busy. And I work with, a I work with, a, a shelter called it's a rescue called grateful rescue and sanctuary. And they started doing bingo online, um, to just, you know, something fun to, to keep the shelter's name out there. And they asked me to host it. And the light was strategically coming on and off while we were playing bingo. And that was something that in when my grandma was here, that was what we did. I mean, she was queen of the bingo hall. She had her own table. Every time I went back to Wisconsin to visit her, we went to play bingo just like we did when I was growing up. And so it was really, really cool that it kind of started out with this fun little, you know, oh, you're back to playing bingo. I'm going to join you. And make sure you know I'm here uh, to bringing my mother through, who then brought my father through and brought me a lot of closure. So it was, I mean, it was astounding, Jan. And I think Kitsy and I both were, it, 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 we needed a minute to process because it was so much in such a short amount of time and so many meaningful family members making their appearance and really giving me uh, a, a message that at the end of the day, Shannon, was uh, go do this show. I mean, that was what literally. 
Yeah, right. That Yeah, that's awesome. Talk about huge yeah. validation. You're like, okay, I'm on the right road here. You're on the right yeah. crossroad, taking the right then path. Then I had to call my financial advisor and say, hey, I'm going to quit my job and do a per- <laughs> per- 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 show. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> of course, that they're like, the this is a good part. idea. <laughs> that was the scariest thing I've experienced. The, right. <laughs> life so far. <laughs> yeah, demons, they ain't got nothing on that. Exactly, <laughs> Kitsy. What was the scene from Poltergeist that that was most memorable as far as being the scariest one for you? Oh my gosh, um, it was the bedroom. It wasn't the clown. It wasn't, um, you know, everybody else's moment. It was the, when that closet opened and when it sucked Carol Ann in. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. But funny story. Poltergeist is actually why this show came to be as well. On Halloween during um, quarantine, I'm like, you know what? I haven't seen Poltergeist in years. And, and and I had gotten over my fear since I started doing this because I've never been on a paranormal investigation that ends like that movie. So I'm okay with it now. <laughs> but um, I'm watching it. And this last time I started crying in the end, I'm like, this is a fucking beautiful story. If you think about it, the paranormal activity happens, you know, the, the, the family members don't know what to do. So they reach out to the paranormal team and they get all the information that they can. And in the end for all the closure and, and, and the happy ending, they bring in the spirit medium to get to the bottom of everything else and everything. Well, it, until you watch part two, ends happily ever after. (laughs) So um, while Tiffany is not quite Tangina, she comes in at the end of our episodes and either validates all the, nine times out of 10, she validates all the uh, evidence that KJ and I end up getting, or she'll, she'll also fill in the blanks. Like when I investigated KJ's house, her mom wasn't really coming through because she wanted to give dad the spotlight so he could say he was sorry. So he could, you know, have the closure as well. But at one point, Peggy, which is KJ's mom said she was waiting for the medium to talk. So in the end, KJ's mom came through with Tiffany. So it was amazing. Yeah. And in case anybody, you know, gets confused about roles, if we needed to get Tiffany those massive glasses, we could. You know, then there's yeah. no guessing. <laughs> no, I love that movie. I can watch it over and over. I'll just put it on the background when I'm cleaning and it makes me happy. But I'm very much in the same boat as you. That When you watch that in your uh, younger years and, you know, maybe you're not quite sure about what all that means. As you said, nothing really uh, has happened quite yet uh, to that extent. Yeah. But it is uh, a terrifying movie. Yeah. Is it two? I was trying. No, three is the high rise, right? I haven't watched two and three that much, to be honest no, with you. Just Shannon, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna confess to you now that I have not seen the movie. The, f- I... the first one? <laughs> I feel like not I, much horror. I, oh. I don't. What? I don't. You know what? Humans scare me, and I feel like uh, horror movies give humans more ideas to be scary. I don't appreciate it. You're right about that. <laughs> One million percent right. The entire like Saw series, I never saw it, but everybody mm. was talking about it, and I'm like, who made up this story and gave crazy people ideas to do this to other people? Like, what are we doing? You know so- what? I will agree with you on that about I've never watched, nor will I ever, unless someone taped my eyelids open, like in the bird box or something. Um, the human caterpillar, uh, oh don't ever gosh. want to see human that. Centipede. I have human watched. centipede. Oh, <laughs> no. Is it as bad as I think that it is? It's awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. Human caterpillar. Shannon, sometimes I think about that concept and it makes me sick. Yeah. Like I, I'll just be going Physically about Ill. my day and I'm like, yeah. God, I hope that's not happening. Like you just right get now. those meaty like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. like in that case, you definitely want to be at the head of the line. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Let's, <laughs> let's just say that right off the bat. Um, yeah. And I poor caterpillar. Sorry. Centipedes. Uh, y- you guys got the shit into that stick. on that one. <laughs> Literally. Literally. How about a favorite location that you've been to or 
and or whatever you guys wanted to talk about, uh, places that you still are, are dying to go investigate. No pun intended. That was horrible. Sorry. Uh, a place that you would like to go investigate for uh, for uh, ghosty stuff. Oh, my gosh. That's a tough one. I mean, for myself, I you know, I've done all the notoriously haunted locations that I, I have not been to Alcatraz. I think that would be really cool just because the adrenaline rush of prisons and jails is so freaking terrifying in itself because the energy is so bad there. Nothing gets to me like a jail or a prison, but you know, I, I, I've been to Mackey's. I've been to a a jail in Australia. I, I, I think I'm good. I really do. Well, and I haven't done any of those things, so I'm up for whatever, (laughs) but you know, if I could pick, uh, you know, if I could pick some place that I would love to just go set up our equipment and see what spirits are there. And, um, you know, I, my life was a bit changed when we went to Ireland. I really loved visiting Mm. there. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, part of my, uh, my homeland. I would love to just like get in one of those castles and spend a night and just see who's there and just like, listen to the stories. Um, you know, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm I, I, I don't like scary things. And I've I think as long as I'm with Kitsy, everything will be OK. But <laughs> I, I don't think I, I I wouldn't pick a jail as my place <laughs> that I want to go investigate. <laughs> you know what? Actually, my bucket list, my mm-hmm. bucket list location is the White House. I want to talk to Abraham Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. How cool would that That'd be? be? Amazing. The white Oh, the secrets, the stories of the, of the mm-hmm. White House. Wow. Yeah. A certain d- d- stains on dresses they they know what's going down over there. <laughs> they would have the inside info they're like we see everything y'all don't know forget twitter this is where the info is yeah. uh, well kj um i mean having said that you you know you dislike horror movies and uh you know you're kind of getting used to the investigations and everything have you thought about because I have things that are on my note list that I'm just like, I already, look, I love this stuff. I do it day in, day out. But I'm like, oh, hell no, that's on the no list. That would freak me out or keep me out of the woods or, you know, don't, no, don't stand over me in my bedroom, you a-hole kind of a thing. It, have you thought about a situation where you might go, okay, maybe enough's enough. Maybe this is too much for me. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I don't think so, just um, because I have... In, you know, in the time that we've been working together, I've, I've also been, you know, I, I have a pretty strong, I call them my spirit squad. So, um, you know, I've got uh, a really great, my main spirit guide is fantastic. She's sarcastic. She actually kept me up uh, one night after an investigation that we did recently because we, uh, we, we pieced together some conclusions that uh, were not uh, in her mind, correct. And so she, <laughs> she was not going to let me sleep until we investigated a little bit further into the spirit guide that had been coming through at this house. So she was sticking up for her fellow spirit guides. Um, but I mean, I, I feel very protected when I go places. Um, I don't even know, honestly, like I'm sitting here now and like, I don't know, maybe we go to a jail because I, I, I am to the point where I would just be like, you know, my spirits and angels like put up the walls and don't let anything around me and let's figure out what's going on here. Um, but I'll let you know, Shannon, because as we go along here, there might be something. Uh, Kitsy let me know on a recent investigation that I might need to prepare myself for poltergeist. And I was like, well, okay, <laughs> what, how do I prepare? <laughs> like, what do yeah. I do? Um, so yeah, I, 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 I think Shannon, my, uh, my drive has always been in my life. Um, if someone came to me and said, you know, are you, are you seeing the ghost in the bedroom at grandma's house that I'm seeing? Yes, I am. Let's, let's treat them with kindness. Um, I've always kind of come from that place of like, well, let's, let's figure out if they're just yelling and throwing things because they tried to be subtle and you didn't pay attention and now they've had to up their game. You know, let's Mm -hmm. see first if that's what's going on. And then, you know, if they're, you know, not coming from a a place of peace, um, let's, 
uh, let's figure out how to uh, how how we do what we need to do to set up the protection to sort of negate uh, what they're doing. So I don't know. I, like I said, I think at this point, you know, Kitsy's kind of opened up this this new path for me. Um, that I've always done in my my home life, but I'm learning a little bit more to hone it. And so maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll go to all the scary places. Maybe I'll go to Mackey's and be like, I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> or maybe I'll cr- call you Shannon and be like, I found my limit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you'll be fine. Doing that. <laughs> you'll be like, bring on the portal to hell. It don't scare me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What was the guide doing to let you know that you had come to the wrong conclusion? Um, she was uh, grumbling in my ear. (laughs) So you um, got the name wrong girls is pretty much what she was. Yeah. She was like (laughs) like screaming what we had. It was very interesting because it was, uh, the homeowner was describing a, a spirit that she sees sometimes walking through the house. And so we were trying to put all of the pieces together. Um, and we had this, a, a spirit guide who came through and he, he introduced himself um, and he actually used his entire name and uh, had us address him as Mr. Um, he was a very proper spirit guide. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, tying things together with, with Tiffany, there were just some things that, you know, we were like, well, okay, so maybe it was that family member or maybe, it, you know, and there was this person who used to live on the property that we were putting it together. And she was like, hey, what about the, you know, the spirit guy? And she kept coming through and like saying, you need to, you, you you need to revisit that. You need to, you need to talk about this guy. He, he didn't come through like, like he didn't come through for nothing is what like, like he didn't come through for nothing. And yeah, you know, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Like I got my dousing rods out because sometimes I can hear her really strong, but she's got a very, um, it's a very low voice. It's almost, it's like somebody's whispering very quietly in a very low voice. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to get the dousing rods out because <laughs> I, I, like, let's have a conversation this way. And yet I just asked her, I'm like, you know, we went through all of the spirits that had come through all of the activity that had happened. And we really just kind of one by one broke it down to where I sent it to the homeowner and said, I just want to let you know that my spirit guide came through and wanted to give you this information and make sure that you know that when this was happening and you were feeling this and you were seeing this, that is your spirit guide and he is with you and he is there to protect you. Um, and so, you know, she was, she was very, it was nice because she sent a, a, a long email back about how much she appreciated it and how her, for the first time, the house that they had moved into finally felt like it was their home. And that's really what we're trying to do. So if it's while we're there that we can reach that, or if it takes Elena waking me up at night going, you're not done yet, there's more information and you got it wrong, then that's, well, then tell us what we need to tell them because (laughs) these homeowners need to know what's going on. That's what we were brought in to do. So you're kind of a Tangina too. We need to get you some glasses like that. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know. I have the same poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you a picture. We won't make you watch it, Thank but you. we'll send you a picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, so Elena, huh? I said that never, yeah. obviously you, well, not obviously, I should ask, have you been talking to Elena and your other guides for a long time? And th- when it started, it didn't freak you out? No, no uh, it never freaked me out. Um, I, I went through a period in my life where I, I tuned it out because, you know, you're a kid and, and everybody tells you you're imagining things. Um, and so then it goes away and then you get to be an adult and you have to start working on those muscles again and reconnect all of those things to get it back. Um, but she was she was always with me. And when um, I had a conversation with a spirit a uh, medium about, oh gosh, about 15 years ago. And he was very clear that I needed, I needed to tune back into her. She, that, you know, you know, she's there. You always used to talk to her. She's still there and you're making your life harder by not listening to her, like listen to her. And so, 
Um, you know, she kind of came back about, like I said, she's always been with me, but about 15 years ago, I started uh, opening myself up again and just uh, letting her, you know, jump in and and grumble in my ear when I'm not doing things the way she wants me to. <laughs> and, and KJ, Elena is a passed on human spirit? She is, yes. And so why, uh, or maybe you don't know, uh, why is she attached to you? Do you have any idea about that? From what I understand, you know, I asked too, like, why are you here with me? Um, she, We make agreements before we go into our lives with uh, other spirits. And sometimes they're um, kindred spirits and people we've had lives with. And sometimes we don't really know them at all. But for whatever reason, what we're trying to accomplish in our life will help them. And what they're trying to accomplish in their life and being our guide is how I understand it. That's pretty dang cool. Yeah. All right, Kitsy. Scariest yeah. experience during an investigation. Um, gosh, you know it. It it had to be one of my my early investigations when I was still scared. Um, because I didn't know what was going on, and it was Lake County Jail up in Crown Point, Indiana. It's actually the area I grew up in. This is the jail that. John Dillinger broke out of. I had come in contact with a spirit who liked to be called fur um, because of certain lady parts covered in hair, for lack of a better term. Mm. That was his nickname was fur. That was the way he liked things. Anywho, um, he tried to, via a K2 session, he was trying to separate me from the rest of my crew, which was my husband and uh, a couple that were longtime family friends. And, you know, they all thought it was freaking hilarious, but I was terrified. I don't, to this day, I can't figure out why I was so scared, but he was trying to separate me. And it's not like it was even trying to take me to another room, to another part of the building. He was just trying, so we were in a day room in this cell block, which is where the, the prisoners would you know, hang out during the day when they were out of their cells. And he was just trying to get me on the other side of the bars outside of this day room. But it was so terrifying to me that one, he had picked me out of everyone else, I believe. And two, that I, I, I mean, at that point I was a new, but I may, I thought maybe some poltergeist, the movie shit was going to go down. I don't know, <laughs> but Again, and Shannon, thank you for this. As I was writing my book, I'm sitting here going over this story in my head and replaying it and replaying it. And he literally, you know, looking back on the entire investigation, I in the end, he told me that I reminded him of somebody that was when he was alive, that was in his life and somebody that he cared about. So I was honestly scared for no absolutely no reason i still can't figure out why i was so scared they're telling me why are you so scared during this investigation i don't know if i thought he was gonna kill me or what maybe the fact that he was al capone's hitman in real life made it even scarier oh, that'll do it yeah 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 <laughs> um but i mean i get out there and he whispered in my ear and and all this other stuff so it was very very scary for a new but now that's the stuff i crave when i'm on investigations if that makes any sense whatsoever oh of course it does i mean but who who wouldn't be scared of uh al capone's hitman and he wants to call himself yeah. fur for that reason you're kind of going oh i th that's information that is going to help my mental capacity during this investigation <laughs> oh good and you uh, singled me out yeah you're like yeah. great yeah. thanks okay so it makes sense to you guys thank god because oh, of course. that night i mean my husband and our friend ray was looking at me like why are you so scared i'm like well it's not you he's picking up <laughs> yeah so what was the worst thing that he he, you know, like, what would he do? Uh, was he coming over the box and talking to you? Was there any physical touching, anything like that? Oh, he did. He grabbed my ass. But oh. in his defense, in his defense, I walked into that day room and I'm like, "Hey, guys," because you know I knew it was a cell block for men. And I'm like, "I'm here," and I wore my booty pants for you. You so, like dropping I mean, stuff and doing the pop lock and what do they call that? Um, <laughs> you're like, "Oopsie, yeah. let me get that yeah. for you." <laughs> 
Okay. You hadn't told me that part, Kitsy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and honestly, I was backed in a corner because I was so scared at the time. And that's when I felt my, my ass being grabbed. So I know it wasn't my husband and I know it wasn't Ray. So, you know, I, I totally, that's my fault. I totally to this day will take responsibility for that. And it's not a hashtag me too moment because I literally <laughs> said, Hey guys, Hey, you know, do you wear those, uh, those on investigations anymore? I, uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked though. I mean, you, you got you know, the story out of it. Jeans for the win. <laughs> exactly. Jeggings, come on now. Uh, they're stretchy. Okay. What about anything ever following you home inadvertently that you didn't mean this to happen after investigation? Oh, I never mean for it to happen, um, but it, it, it happens. So there were two very prominent investigations where I made a connection. This is the Oddity Files days where I made a connection with the spirit from the moment I walked into the building. Till the moment, at the time, I thought till the moment I left, where it was just the the contact, the uh, evidence, everything was pointing to one, usually a female, well, both times, a female spirit. And I, I really feel like I built up a relationship with both of these girls. Anna, at one point, this is at the Culbertson Mansion in southern Indiana. At one point, she was scared of some activity my friend Clayton was seeing in the hallway. He was seeing a shadow on the ceiling and via dowsing rod session and an ovulus session, she had let us know that she was scared of what was going on in the hallway. And at that point in time, I said, well, come hang out with me. I'll protect you. Well, that also means you can follow me home and we are now best friends forever. Come to find out because of Bobby <laughs> Mackey's, I did the exact same thing. So at Bobby's, uh, this spirit, Abby, actually, it, it had happened a few times before. Actually, it happened with both Anna and Abby. So Anna is from Culberson Mansion. Abby is from Bobby Mackey's. A uh, Abby was a rape victim in the men's room at Bobby Mackey's, and she ended up killing her attacker at the time. This was back in the 20s during the, um, the gambling den upstairs in what ended up being Carl's apartment. Anybody who's familiar with the Bobby Mackey story knows what I'm talking about. Um, but it started off with her actually showing herself to me. Um, and our cameras caught it. So uh, <laughs> I still to this day can't believe uh, we, we got that on film. It's available on Amazon Prime. It's Oddity Files season three, episode six. And right after she showed herself to her, the name Abby came over, um, and like I said, she communicated with me the rest of the night via the spirit box. Anything we used, it was her, except when we were in the basement. I, You know, I understand why she doesn't want to go down there. There's all kinds of stories in the basement, but there, I didn't find a goddamn demon down there, and I went in blindfolded. Just putting that out there for wow. the record. No demons in Bobby Mackey's basement, for me, anyway. But... Um, I probably, I did smudge myself afterwards and told everything, you know, you have to stay here. Uh, you cannot follow me home, but Shannon, something I've learned over time doing this as long as I have is once these spirits realize they have free will, they're going to do whatever the hell they want. And if Abby wanted to follow me home, she followed me home. I didn't realize it until I investigated almost six months later a location that um, a spe one of the very first locations I had ever investigated. It's called Fairy Plantation in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And the spirits were avoiding me on this investigation and I couldn't, I'm, I'm like, this place is haunted. I know there's Henry in the attic. I know there's the nanny here, blah, 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 blah. And uh, the fairy plantation girl, I had met them all before. I was very excited to see them all again, but they were avoiding me until the, the guy who was uh, running the investigations there, they have to hang out because it is a museum insurance reasons. He, ha he hangs out in the little office area and he came in and said, the spirits came to him and told him I brought somebody with them, with me, 
that they don't like being there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. And he told me what she looked like, and she was in a flapper dress from the 1920s. And he said her name was Abby. And I said, well, oh. I know exactly who that is. I had no idea we were besties and hanging out. Apparently, she came back and just played with Anna the entire time. They've been living the high life ever since. Um, but... Yeah, and it was it was like this whole traumatic experience where one of the ghosts was trying to get Abby to cross over at the plantation. This oh. episode has never aired. It's still all the stuff is sitting on a hard drive somewhere. Oh my gosh. And, yeah, so this is like legit exclusive content for your show, Shannon. And these spirits are trying to get her to cross over and she's refusing and screaming and crying. The entire time, um, she did not cross over. I personally think, and because I'm not 100% with my abilities yet, I still, I'm, from time to time, call it my crazy. But what I saw in my mind's eye is she's scared to try to cross over because she did kill this man who raped her, and she knows she's going to hell. Oh, Yeah. So that's the story of how Abby oh. came into my life. Jeez, I just started word vomiting everywhere. That was, <laughs> that, that was a good round of it, though. That was uh, informative. And I mean, that's insane. So yeah, she. Wow. But that is sad, though. I mean, uh, first it of is. all, she killed her rapist. I'm sorry. High five. It's, it's just really yeah. sad to to think that she feels that and she may be right I who well, none of us really know for sure but that she's going to hell right so that's why she's she wants to be essentially you know in the middle in purgatory and not and yeah. not cross over holy smokes mm -hmm. so I, I mean are you or have you felt her or seen her or anything at home um not really but I will say so Anna used to be very we we would hear her all the time in the house. Once I realized she was here, it's just it's like all of a sudden it was always footsteps up in in the master bedroom. When we were up there, we would never hear it, but it was always footsteps and movement up in the master bedroom. But you know, looking back and and when everything meshed and laid out timeline wise, that pretty much came to a halt after Bobby Mackey's. So I literally think the girls are just hanging out, having a good time, living their best life here, which I am fine with. They're not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. They seem to be happy here. Um, I brought in a couple extra <laughs> haunted dolls. Um, so they have Did more you get cups. You got those dolls for the girls to play with? <laughs> I, well, it was also the pandemic and I couldn't go ghost hunting. So that was part of okay. it. Okay. She needed something. <laughs> The things you do when there's a quarantine. <laughs> but I think they are living their best life. I really do. I really do. I didn't, You know, would I love to have a medium come here and tell me exactly what they see? KJ keeps telling me we, me we need to investigate my house, which yes. we probably do. Well, and Kitsy, Tiffany's going to be here in a couple of weeks for our live show at PopCon. You see if she'll uh, chit-chat with your girls while she's there. Yeah. Could yeah. make a whole episode out of that. I mean, I know, right? You've got the Pull Ouija out boards. The, uh, lost footage you're talking about. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Run yeah. Is there? Together. That's a good uh, point, KJ. Are you planning on uh, airing that episode ever? No, because I only have two um, investigations, and it doesn't make a whole season. My thoughts are someday when I have all the time and I can hire people to do it. So there were two investigations after what you see now on prime. Um, one was like right into the pandemic. And um, I was like, you know, I'm here at my house. I know I'm safe. Carter's here at my house. I know I'm safe. Clayton had gone on a little trip to Tennessee and I'm like, dude, I can't have you. Um, I, 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 it's the beginning of the pandemic. I thought everybody was just going to die. So Carter and I went to this asylum in Randolph County, Indiana and the girls, both of the girls were there and they told me the reason they're with me is they are the ones that let these spirits know that I'm, I'm going to cry a little bit. I'm sorry Aww. that, that I mean them no harm and that I am there to genuinely tell their story. So I feel like they were kind of 
hitchhiker spirit guides. So I would love to turn those two investigations where they were based around those two spirits and turn it into maybe a a, a documentary. Yeah, I think kind that'd be like awesome. A, yeah. So, you know, when there's time. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> well, you guys don't sleep, so there's plenty of time. Um, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. We ha- we have a list, Shannon. It's called the down the road list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll add that to down the road. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's really awesome, Kitsy. And I know it's not. It cannot be easy to, you know, when you're dealing with actual people that have passed on and they're stuck and they're hurting. And I I could see where you would take on some of that pain. So okay, and that may be a good segue into these these last couple of questions here and in reference to paranormal crossroad as far as your mission goes for that because i've been looking into to your whole mo for that and i think it's awesome what do you guys think needs to change when it comes to paranormal investigations oh girl do you got an hour You know, people just need to stop going for the fear factor. They really, I know that's why they go. They watch the shows on TV. Um, If you want to go, do a paranormal investigation. But, you know, okay, you need to treat these spirits with respect. You need to speak to them like they're standing in the room with you, not like you're filling out their comments on their Facebook page. You need to have empathy for these spirits. Um, if you don't have empathy for them, they're not going to have empathy for you. And I hope they do push you down the stairs. Um, <laughs> you, So you just need to treat them like you would. Paranormal investigators need to treat the spirits like they're actual human beings in the room with them and treat them like they would want that spirit to treat them. Just have a fucking conversation. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. (laughs) If you think about it, we don't quite understand why they're coming through, why they're disrupting our lives, um, if you will. But maybe they don't understand why we're disrupting theirs, right? Like, Uh, Do they interpret this as we're in their space? We don't know. So why are we yelling at them? Why are we assuming it's, it's evil? Why are we assuming it's bad? I actually, I was, I was just talking yesterday to a family member who I've been, you know, working through with some weird activity in their house. And it was, you know, very clear that, you know, it was, uh, our, our grandfather is visiting. She's got a, a spirit guide that's been there. Um, there's an, a, a cat that passed away. Like it was all of this beautiful stuff. And then yesterday she starts messaging me and she's like, the dog just saw something. And the, I mean, she looked like she was really happy, but now the cat's going crazy. And like, I'm like, okay, come back to everything that we have already <laughs> established here. Like you just told me that the dog was happy to see something and we've already established we've got, you've got good, good spirits around you and you know that you can tell them that they need to tone it down or, you know, Shannon, I say, we don't let people walk in and out of our doors. Our doors aren't just open. People can't just come in and out of our doors whenever they want. So you, you can tell the spirits that are coming to visit you, like, these are not visitation hours. Sorry. Like, I love you, but come back later. Um, But to just not go to that place from a paranormal investigator standpoint or from, you know, just your own experience that it's immediately something bad. It it more than likely is it. It more than likely is that they have been doing little things to nudge you and be like, I'm here and here's this nice thing and, here's this little sign and you're not paying attention. So they're like, I'm going to shake the freaking door and <laughs> rattle the cabinets because you're not paying attention. Like that's, you know, I mean, it, I just think that it's, it's changing the mindset for everyone and maybe normalizing this a little bit that people are afraid to talk about it. Um, you know, the amount of people now that I have since we started the show that, want to share their story with me. And oh my gosh, I have this weird stuff going on. And they lower their voice like they need to whisper to tell me. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's okay. Guess what? Yeah. 
most people are having weird stuff going on. And if we all start talking about it, it won't be weird anymore. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> and she going into people's homes, it's not the Native American tied to the land in these houses. It's not, you know, a guy who was murdered five blocks away, like so much you're seeing on TV. It's it's family members. It's spirit guides that are just trying to reach out and tell you something, whether it's like KJ's dad saying he was sorry or like um, another one we had done recently where she was – her intuition was was – opening up a little bit more. She, she was seeing things and, and it was her spirit guides trying to tell her to completely open that up, that it's time for her to do that. Another one was a grandfather that the guy, he, he just didn't really even have a close relationship with him, but his grandfather was trying to guide him on the right path, not to worry about staying in the box, not to worry about what his family members are freaking out about, telling him just to live his life and be happy. It's not like you're seeing on all the TV shows. It's It literally is family members and spirit guides just trying to communicate. My mind has been blown. So what you're saying is, Kitsy, you have never uttered the words, come at me, bro, at a location. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) I kind of want to make a shirt that says we're paranormal crossroad. We will not come at you, bro. (laughs) (laughs) I'd wear that in a heartbeat. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Last official question. And then we're going to talk about the Kickstarter. Uh, I know a little bit about you guys, and I want to know, when will you be getting Chris Evans on an investigation with you? <laughs> I reached out to Mr. Evans about his personal paranormal story. He says he doesn't have one. So- Bullshit. Uh, listen, Shannon, I invited, uh, Chris Evans to my cat's birthday party today. I have not heard back from him yet, um, but I named my cat Johnny Storm because, uh, uh, because of Chris Evans. So I felt like that's the tweet where he'll finally answer me Yes, and, uh, I will, I'll, I'll keep you posted, but yes, uh, you know, we, the kind of nerdy girls, our signature, uh, our, 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 signature segment is the Chris Evans update. Yes. <laughs> and so if, if we can get Chris Evans to join us on a paranormal crossroad show, even if it's just, he wants to maybe, uh, you know, see how we do our thing. Uh, Kitsy, I know at some point, didn't you talk, who was it that you talked to that did maybe have some ghost stories that we worked with that was it? Uh, I don't remember. Tom Holland had some stories. See, like we could get, we could investigate for Tom Holland and Chris Evans could come along to see how we do our work. There you go. There I, you go. I just want to know, how could he not RSVP to the cat's birthday party? That's so rude. I, I mean, it's, it's his so. namesake. It's Johnny Storm. How could he? <laughs> <laughs> At some point that he'll respond that he saw the tweet too late, but that he is wishing Johnny Storm a very happy birthday. So I'll it's keep coming. you posted on yeah, that. It, it's That's coming. a story we'll continue to follow. <laughs> I certainly will. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Paranormal Crossroad Kickstarter. So we are recording this, everyone, on June uh, 26th, uh, Saturday. It has 15 days left as of today. And uh, this will air uh, this coming Thursday. So there is still time to get in on this Kickstarter. Let's let everybody know what in the world is going on with that. And I think it's a a really important mission. Uh, You guys have funded it, but there are, of course, stretch goals going on. So let everybody know about that. KJ, you go with the stretch goals because I always put my second list. If we do ever reach this first stretch goal, I've already (laughs) got a second list sitting over here. So you know exactly what's on that list. You made that list. Go. Uh, yeah. So, um, obviously the reason we started the, the Kickstarter is because we really, um, uh, we had a, an opportunity to, um, be on a, a flagship station here, uh, WNDY, my Indy TV in Indianapolis. And, um, 
we were just getting so much positive feedback that it felt like even though it was terrifying that the support was there and that we could get a full season. Um, and so we, we actually, Shannon, we started this Kickstarter on June 12th because it's a 30 day campaign and that would put us wrapping up at PopCon uh, the weekend of July 9th through the 11th. So I was like, if we have no money by then, we'll at least be in front of thousands of people for the last three days to beg them to not let us completely embarrass ourselves and fail. <laughs> So that's the truth of why it started when it did. Uh, and then we were just blown away. In three days, we reached our first goal, which will give us that full season. We'll um, premiere July 17th. Uh, the episodes will you know, still be available on YouTube for our, our following um, that is outside of the Indiana area. Um, but the stretch goal is really about upgrading the quality of the show, the experience that we can give people. Um, when we started this, it's with a lot of equipment that Kitsy has had for a long time. Um, we have a lot of, I know Shannon, you know this, uh, we, we have a lot of interference with our audio and <laughs> batteries that get drained on paranormal investigations. And so one of the biggest things we've really struggled with is that the audio cutting in and out. And um, so upgrading that equipment, um, uh, getting Kitsy an editor, you can actually uh, kickstart uh, and donate it so that your name is in the credit of the show. You can be an associate producer, an executive producer, or you can just donate an hour of editing time so that Kitsy can do more investigating and helping bring people more peace and less sitting in front of her computer trying to put together <laughs> the show. So um, we have uh, editing software, hours of editing. Um, we you know, we have the audio equipment, we have light up cat balls because we've had a lot of pet spirits coming through and I wanted to make sure if they want to communicate with pet toys that we have them. Um, it's, we're about halfway right now, Shannon, to stretch goal number one, which is, uh, $3,000. So we're just over 1500 and, uh, this will, it's not the, it's not the most fun part. You're like, you go look at it and you're like, I am going to fund an, an SD card. Well, yeah. yeah. You know how big the SD cards need to be for <laughs> us right. to make these shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and when it's, ghosts drain batteries, that gets really expensive really quickly, guys. Really yeah. expensive. So just trying to, um, what we're calling the stretch goal, we're calling it a smoother road to peace because this equipment will help speed pave the way for us to do more investigating and less. Okay. Stop you guys. Cause this camera is about to go dead and the GoPro just stopped working. And I don't know why, but no one can hear me talking now. Yeah. Um, so smoothing that out. The struggle so that is can, real. We can do more investigations. And then with us being halfway to stretch goal number one, if we can accomplish that stretch goal, number two is going to have all these fun investigative uh, toys that we want to get, like the trip wire and some of this other stuff that we can add in that will make, um, you know, watching the show and helping us communicate uh, more fun and hopefully easier for the spirits. So speaking of PopCon, it's uh, in Indianapolis at the Indianapolis Convention Center. We're actually going to be live on stage with some of the recent investigations that we've done with the homeowners. And we're going to kind of catch up with them and find out if we really did bring them peace or not. Or if, you know, things went haywire after we left. Because honestly, that is my biggest fear. And, you know, it's going to be kind of like The View. But it's going to be KJ and I with our Paranormal Crossroad coffee cups that you can get at ParanormalCrossroad.com. They're talking about the experience with these inv these uh, homeowners, and then in the end, we're gonna we're gonna kick it up ninety style, like you're watching a Montel episode, and bring Tiffany out to actually <laughs> do these homeowners. Uh, spirit medium rating right there live on stage. So this is something that hasn't really been done in the paranormal TV world before. We're going to film the entire thing in front of a live studio audience. I don't know what bug crawled up my butt, but I decided that this needed to happen. So join us, anybody who's listening at Indie PopCon. It's it's uh, Indie. No, it's PopCon. 
dot us, right? Yep. Popcon dot us. Yes, and you can get tickets there. And then Tiffany's going to do a gal a very limited gallery reading after we're done filming that as well. But they're all, we're there all weekend. We'll be doing panels and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, just like the view, except less bitching at each other and arguing, and nobody quitting the show because you yeah. can't stand each other. I'm trying to think like, is there a is there a nicer show? Because there's so much <laughs> drama on the View. I'm like, well, we're like the View, but we actually like each other, and it'll right. be yeah. a really enjoyable experience. <laughs> a lot less scowling, you know, just sulking, <laughs> pissy. I like to call myself the Oprah of the paranormal, so we'll just say Oprah style. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that'll it. work. It is. It's very much Oprah style with that, like uh, Kitsy said, if you ever watched Montel in the 90s when he would have uh, Sylvia Brown on, it's, you know, and everybody, people are crying and moved and like it's every, every show that we, every show that we've done so far, every investigation, not only are we incredibly moved and, um, you know, I feel very honored to be such a part of an experience that, that someone else is having that's changing their life. Um, but the viewers that are watching it are, are very moved. We, we've created paranormal crossroad, uh, tissues, like the little tissue packs you can put in your purse because, uh, we're going to give them out at PopCon because, you know, like it just seems to be that the, the happy tears flow when we get the, the, the spirit box out and chat with these people that need to come through and give messages to the people they love. Yeah. People we're may like need the it. lifetime network version of paranormal shows. <laughs> Until somebody comes through and they go, you are not the father. And then you're like, wait, no, wrong show. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> oh, that, that'll be the plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, usually it's you are the father. That usually gets them even worse, right? Depending on what, what episode it is. Yep. Uh, ladies, uh, if someone is on kickstarter.com, do they, what do they type in to search for uh, Paranormal Crossroad? You can just type in Paranormal x road and it will come right up and if you go to the easiest way to get to it if you go to paranormalcrossroad.com um it, it, it's the first thing you see there's a great great big image you click on it and it, it goes right to our kickstarter page there's a video that explains a little bit about kitsy story my story why we're doing what we're doing um there's uh some of the examples of the investigations that we've done just to kind of give you the whole just the whole idea of how this started and why it is to us very important to be able to continue to help the people that we're helping bring more peace and then you can see all of the really cool rewards which you know if you've ever you know wanted to see your name in the credits of a show this is your opportunity and Kitsy, you've already done my job a couple times by mentioning your wonderful book that we published with Beyond the Fray Publishing. Uh, but I just want to say while I have you on that we're very proud that you are a part of the BTF family. And ladies, you are both wonderful human beings. Your work is awesome. And please let everyone know all the different things, of course, that you guys are doing and plug whatever you want so people can find you. KJ, you do you, I'll do me. Okay. Uh, easiest way to find me and all of the stuff and things that I do is kjontheair.com. Uh, my podcast, Kind of Nerdy Girls, again, uh, you know, just like Paranormal Crossroad is female owned, female led. Uh, same with the Kind of Nerdy Girls. If you love movies, TV, there's a book that you nerd out about. It is a friendship podcast based in fandom. Uh, and you can get to that at kindofnerdygirls.com. You can find me on Pet Pals TV and all of my stuff and things again, kjontheair.com. And all my stuff and things are at flow.page slash Kitsy Duncan. You can buy my book. I'd rather talk to dead people there. You can find episodes of Paranormal Crossroad. You can find episodes to Oddity Files. And I also have a podcast that's called Oddity Files as well, where my friend Nick Floyd and I, we have a slight obsession with Bigfoot. I think he's a nice guy that knows not to hang around with people because I do the same thing. And um, we like to tell each other stories with enough snark and humor that you guys can still sleep with the lights off. Yeah, but stop playing. Once again, look at that list you guys just gave me. Y'all don't sleep. 
So you're not you're not <laughs> fooling yeah. anybody. Yeah. My, okay. <laughs> my spirit guides woke me up in the middle of the last last night with a plan for a new teaser for the brand new episode oh. of Paranormal Crossroad that dropped yesterday. Is that why you made that teaser this morning? <laughs> yep. I couldn't sleep until I did it. Had to get that out of your head, right? That's really cool. They're they're just dropping all kinds of cool stuff into your in gray matter. They need to keep that yeah. up. They're very helpful, Shannon. I will say, both Kitsy and I have a have great spirit squads. But if they could just like leave us alone between you know ten and six, that would be great. And snooze um, hours, man. So where's the snooze just, button for the the guys? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Please, if they're listening, if they're listening to the show right now, if you guys could please, I mean, even a couple days a week, yeah. give us an eight hour straight where we get some rest. Yeah, maybe the weekend. <laughs> well, you know, you, yeah, you throw the full moon in with retrograde ending, and they just go insane. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a week, and then I'm going to start having some words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you might have to, because actually, you know, we joke about vampiric uh, tendencies, but you mess with people's sleep, and they get a little grumpy. You know, uh-huh. well, we, we need yeah, sleep. We want to keep being the nice paranormal people. <laughs> yes. The, the word peace needs to stay within all of the things that you guys do. But when you don't get sleep, the word peace may turn into uh, another, like, I don't know, four letter word very quickly. So, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. yeah. well, ladies, thank you so very much. I, it was my pleasure talking to you guys today. Thank you for having this. Like you said earlier, this was long overdue. Thank you for believing in me to write my book as well that I have you know, I am always talking about it. So thank you. Of course. And please, I'm waiting for the waiting for the second one with bated <gasps> breath. So, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm working on it. On it. Mm-hmm. I've got to do more investigation. So I have things to write about. Yeah, I, you guys are going out. So I, you can't hide from me. I know what's going down. So <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Yes, thank, ma'am. Thank you, ladies. And that's KJ, on that, happy Shannon, birthday. That's on the down the road list. D- yeah, that's down right. Down, list. down. The, you can kick that. You can keep kicking the can. It'll hit the wall eventually, though. You know, we we all find that. We're like, oh, I'll get to that later. You're like, oh, it's time to do that now. I actually, really do it. So happy birthday to the uh, to the kitty cat. I am sure that Mr. Evans will be in touch shortly. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye, ladies. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. The Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some of the story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real evil. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you are.
believe literally in reincarnation, that after your funeral, you know, you will suddenly become somebody different, living somewhere else. They will say reincarnation means this, that if you sitting here now are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. There is only the present. That's the only real you that there is. The Zen master Dogen put it in this way. He said, Spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Straight, 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 straight. 